So we're being followed. <laughs> I don't know. There's only 2,400 different varieties in the UK and Ireland. I know. Well, I don't know. See, sadly, look, a uh, tree has come down. Part of a tree has come down or a branch down here. But since the pruning last year, you can see the crop is not as vigorous at all this year. I think it is. Grandpa would plant them in rows of similar types so they'd be similar in ripening mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it's perfect place for lambs to fatten with the addition of sweet windfall apples to eat. <laughs> now, don't be all sympathetic with the lambs. You eat them. <laughs> and they're delicious. Aren't I awful? But I grow food. You're, what are you calling this now? Well, this agroforestry. I don't like actually, you know, do you call it agroforestry or agro woodland or, you know, it's... So it's, it's, it's a... Tree, it's trees and food. It's trees and food, even though the food are apples and the lambs are grazing under it. And, yeah, I, it's an incredibly fertile system, isn't it? Um, trees and food. Well, yeah, because the sheep graze and the multi-species sward underneath and poop under the trees. Sorry? Yes, that's a hazel. Yeah, no, my grandfather surrounded the orchard with hazel trees. The problem is when the gray squirrel become, became predominant, it would eat the hazels before they were ripe. And since the pine martens have returned to the area, the uh, red squirrel has returned and there's less of the gray squirrel, mm -hmm. more hazelnuts are ripening nice right. to be eaten. Yeah. Take, look at the base of it. Yeah, no, he coppiced them for yeah. firewood. Yeah. They were coppiced in rotation. Yeah. No, that's, that again, it's, you know, that's agroforestry. Yeah. Because right. it's growing food, it's a windbreak, the nuts, shelter for animals all everything it's hazel trees are fantastic and i mean it's huge hazel, willow, all the, you know, community, community coppicing has got to be the way forward community coppicing because it's also a way for the leafy uh, end branches then you can chip and mulch for bedding and then return that and it makes a really i mean my friend who's grown been growing tomatoes with really good compost that she's been making plant-based compost. Uh, she was eating, we shared tomato plants this year and I gave her some and I grew mine. And I grew mine on the compost that I make from the shed, which is a mixture of wood chip, straw, and the horse sheep manure. And it's compost for a period of time. And then that's the basis of what my tomatoes are fed. And the difference, my friend was saying like, what do you do to your tomatoes that I don't do? And I purely said it was my compost, which is animal manure, straw, and wood chip. I love the idea that you're saying that one is plant-based and the other is not. Is uh, yeah, in, in some sort of way, you could say they're both plant-based. Uh, so one is composted plant-based manure from ruminants and herbivores, and the other is plant-based compost from... Uh, chippings of comfrey and uh, clippings of comfrey and nettles that are turned into juice or composted I, I, from I her garden. Think, the term plant based was invented by Saatchi and Saatchi. Well, I don't know about it. I know, I think, well, whoever invented it. Oh, marketing. Oh, of course, marketing. Advertising. It's not... <laughs> so you can see these are more hazels on the left. And straight ahead at the far end of the orchard over there, that's a whole row of hazels. And when I came home, I could, you know, come up here and harvest a whole load of hazelnuts. And I'd sit with a hammer and break them and chew. Your oldest trees are, you said 1940. The oldest apple trees are 1940 in this so orchard. because he years old. Yeah, so when he they, planted it. When they talk about sequestering carbon. Yeah. You know. You've got God knows how much going into the soil or being secured in the soil because it's pasture. Yeah. And you've got 80-year-old trees, which some of them are going to live 
as long again. Yeah. You know, you go full standard trees, full size trees, you know, they've got phenomenal life. Unlike a commercial orchard, which lasts for 12 years and you cut it down again. And look at the base of those hazels. Yeah. I mean, those hazels would have been planted as windbreaks for this orchard in 1940 as well. Yeah. So they've had years, decades of coppicing and regrowing. So their root structure is huge underneath that. And then, they for example, that is a, that um, hawthorn there is very old as well. You can see the thickness of its I was, trunk. I was watching a piece on the west coast of Scotland, where they were in a uh, one of the few areas of temperate rainforest left. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, you come and have a look at this. And there was, I can't remember what the species was, but it was seven trunks. Yeah. Big trunks, like 18 inches yeah. diameter. And he said, you know, that was originally coppiced, probably in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. And this temperate rainforest was managed. Yeah. Coppiced. No, that's the thing. Is uh, coppicing is a huge management <coughs> uh, thing for us to survive because yeah. they needed firewood. Oh, it's yeah. For heating and subsequently cooking. I look cooking. at so many biofuels and biomass ideas, and none of them really stack up because of the plant nutrient side. The plant nutrient side is hugely neglected. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, you know, my favourite one is all seed rape, as you know. Because? Oh, because there's total reliance on nitrogen. It doesn't work with the soil biome, symbiotically. It's a great ruiner of soil. And when you actually look at it, only 10% of the entire biomass produced ends up as oil. Only 10% of the production is used yeah, within the food or bio de biofuel industry. Yeah, because, The rest of it is... Well, it's only 75% 70, of the plant is actually green and stalk. Yeah. So that has to biodegrade back into carbon dioxide anyhow. And the other 25% ends up as oil, or ends up as seed, Yeah. of which only 40% or 42% ends up as oil. So in fact, you're actually harvesting 10% of the total plant mass. Uh, and basically also rape needs a huge amount of insecticide. insecticide and fertilizer for it to grow because it is not compatible with our native soil biome. It's not anywhere because it's a man-made, man-bred. It's a man-bred hybrid. Plant. From what was its original mustard, parent plant? Wasn't it? What was its original Probably parent plant? Mustard. Mustard, yeah, that's the what I was thinking. Family. It's the mustard family. Here are my bees. Be mindful, they don't, some of them are quite angry where, because where they is, still. Where's this multi stem tree? Oh, we've passed it. I apologize. It's here somewhere. We'll go back oh, to multi, the. Multi. No, we passed it. And look at my puffer mushroom. It's getting oh. to the puffer mus stage. Is it not there yet? No. It's almost at the puffy stage. Sorry, the multi stem tree is right opposite. I think this is it that the, sadly, this is it. And the people, I stopped the people. It had these one, two, three, four, five different species. I, you know. uh, this was one of my grandfather's pride and joys because he had five trees, different apples growing off of one trunk. And you can see, you can still see, you can still see where he joined them, the um, graft places, the, the lump where yeah, it no, was grafted. I, I remember trying to get some graft wood off here. Not years, easy. Uh, no, because it was, <laughs> I tried grafting a piece about an inch long. And it didn't take. It didn't work. No, because you need a longer bit to well, graft. You would have thought, but I, I managed to get extraordinary bits and pieces to take. Now this looks an interesting one on this side. Yeah, a kind of a russety looking apple. Yeah. I'd have to talk to Lynn. She she might remember what um, what some of those different five different ones were. I was so cross with the ESB when I caught them up here chainsawing this tree.
Yeah, you can see they were taking down three, the chainsaw marks. They were still very alive and healthy, but these are the ones that they, I stopped them just in time because there was um, electric cables going over. Yeah. And I came flying up through the gate, roaring my head off. Destroyed a piece of Irish heritage. Exactly, destroying a piece of my oh. Irish heritage. I should have brought the pole up. Yeah.